one of the most common comments I got in response to the red deer issue I've been having is to hunt in the late zones and to quickly explain the red deer issue I'm referring to, we're going on about 1000 stags since our last diamond and like I said often it has been uh, kind of advised to hunt this late zone and in truth it is something that I do on a fairly regular basis but I thought it would be important to not just say that I do it but to actually go out here in a video and do it. So. That's what we're here to do today, and unless we can manage to get a diamond, and obviously that is the hope if not a great one, we'll be over 1,000 kills without a diamond by the end of this video. So either way, uh, milestones kind of, maybe not good ones, but at least we're kind of racking up numbers. And this kind of is the norm for hunting the later zones. I don't normally have any stags on this side of this lake uh, for the early zones, but Usually that 1700 window, there are red deer stags here, and by the way, I'm referring to this particular part of this lake in the southeast. I'll often get them over here in the morning, but never over on the west side. And just to be 100% honest, I was certain we messed this shot up, but got just that top left corner of the upper neck and into the jaw. Not even a skull shot to mess up what is only a silver. And I think uh, at this point, it is probably worth mentioning that we're going to do, as we always do with these red deer hunts, pretty much anything in that silver uh, size range will just kind of be cut out of the video in order to make it not like a 30 minute video of a bunch of level 5 red deer, and anything that makes gold or better will of course be included. Call it wishful thinking, but every single time I see a rack like this, I just have hopes that it's going to be a level 9, and it's so funny it's reached this point because before, you know if a level 9 showed up, that's great, but it was never something that made that big a difference to me. Now with this insane streak of no diamonds, all that I want to see is a uh, level nine just to, just to feel like we're actually doing something right. But you know, I didn't see any hunting pressure pop up just yet. This guy's laying here dead. I have to assume we got the eight as well. That one we lung shot. And all right, didn't make it all that far either. I guess we were just a little bit too quick in fast traveling for when the pressure popped up, but that's interesting. 222 weight and 222 score. I think I mentioned this maybe in our last red deer hunt. I really wish this was a diamond rack. Like the length of some of these tines, I don't know, it, it looks better to me than the small nine rack that you get, but that is, I guess, uh, kind of a small point. We do have some good looking diamond red deer. I've shown this spot a bunch of times and it continues to be one of my favorites and mostly because it kind of becomes a self-drive in a way. So I'll kind of explain the way that it works in just a moment, but there should be, yeah, one other kind of decent stag, and the main reason that I wanted to include it, I actually got to see them in their zone for once. They were a little closer to where I fast traveled from, so I knew there would be one kind of half-decent one that was something. Just smoked a hind, I have no idea where. If we can get a, oh my goodness, Hines are just soaking up all the rounds. It's a good thing we're on a tripod or we'd be in pretty big trouble hunting pressure was. Alright, gotta do what you gotta do, I guess. But uh yeah, just in case you've not seen this location before, for whatever reason, the red deer drink, the zone is here, but they're always kinda like down in this area. And as long as I get within render of them and then fast travel to this spot, they always flee kinda east along the coast there, and they'll just run right past us and give us opportunities for shots, and you can see exactly why I use the tripod. There are often a good number of stags. In this case, there were three. I think we got all three pretty well. I'm not sure where that second one we shot was, and then of course that hide that we dropped. I want to see where we hit that. I can only assume brain. Actually, middle neck. Just the absolute back of it. That was Closer to being a flesh hit than that first uh, stag that we shot when he was running away. Got another one laying down here. I'm not sure about the second hind that we accidentally hit. I, I have no idea if that one's going to go down. Uh, that blood would indicate probably not, so that's not one to really worry about. We do have one more stag laying down right here, though. And yeah, again, this spot tends to be pretty reliable. We managed three stags and a bonus uh, hind kill, but. Nice. We've been good so far at those shots where we need to hit the neck. No skull shots, no ruining the metal. And despite the fact that he's not exactly the best looking level 7 we've ever seen. A 185 gold anyway. 
I gotta say, you know it is a little bit of a rough hunt when non-max weight estimate level 7s make it into the final cut, and that's just kind of been the way it's going, but that's about 360. I think holding that shot up high is going to be about right. He's going down, and there actually is, or was, a level 4 in there somewhere. I don't know where he got to, but by the way, I mentioned at the beginning, like, I do often make these runs in the later drink time and don't often record them. This is just why, like, I know it's tough to see, especially if you're watching on like a mobile device where the screen size is not all that big. So I tend to stick to kind of daylight hunts, but in this case, the one nice thing about doing a run like this on video versus a daytime run, because the majority are daytime runs, the red deer are generally in the same place, but the night zones, they actually are in slightly different areas, which does kind of keep it fresh, I suppose. There is our four, by the way. 220-ish, if we can make this quick. Now, I wanted to kind of get into the heart there, be a little further left, but I knew he was bound to dip his head to drink again, and I didn't want to end up hitting a skull shot. But I suppose not the worst tracking job in the world. Left lung shot, yeah, we were quite a bit off from getting the heart there, but yeah. I guess that's evidence that it's probably not a good idea to rush shots. And as for our level 7 that we shot from 350 plus, 359 meters, actually almost too high. It was vertebrae and the top of the lung. 188 for him. At least they are making gold. I think it was, again, in a recent red deer hunt, we had the not-so-common level 7 silver. At least that does look a little better. Max word estimate, but a 7 once again. And there is a little 6 beside him. I don't love our odds of getting that one. We'll kind of see. Oh, wow. That really works, getting that shot through, like, above another deer to actually get the neck. But we were able to. And then over on this side, that's a weird-looking one. I don't know if I've ever seen that many tines up by the top. I mean, surely that's a fairly common rack, but I've maybe never noticed it from this side. It is just two kind of lackluster stags, and once again, we're kind of dealing with this situation where one is not at all in an ideal spot. I don't know if I love our odds of getting yet another neck shot, especially like that, but yeah, able to do it. I think often, especially when they are like smaller stags, if I just go for it and don't overthink it, usually it's fine. Like the M1 tends to be pretty intuitive as far as like bullet drop and just not overthinking your shots, but when I do start to really think about what I'm doing, I am bound to mess it up, but that's four stags here. Did I remember to... yeah. <laughs> There's a tripod back there that I was supposed to use for those second stags, and that is going to delete this zone. I think I prefer when they're all kind of clustered in here, because the alternative is kind of a bunch of stags way over in there where that hind is. And it's just, it's not an easy place to hunt them. They tend to just get, like, up behind some of the brush. Sometimes they're all clustered into where other red deer are in the way. It's just really not the ideal scenario, but, eh, kind of the same deal. We'll just have to delete that zone once they go there, and eh, eventually they'll kind of move back into where they just were. But you can kind of see as we're going along here, the only even mythical we had was like our second stag kill of the entire hunt. And we just actually have like one more spot to check, which is gonna be the Tornado Lake down here in the south center of the map. It's just not been the most uh, fruitful hunt. And par for the course, a level five and a level three down here at the Tornado Lake. I just, I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's just been tough to, to really find any significant size stag and it seems like no matter what we do this is just the result we're easily over 1000 kills now since our last diamond i would say about 1020 and of course you guys haven't seen all of the stag kills from this so that might seem to not make sense i don't think we've had 20 yeah there's no way we've had 20 uh, actually included in the video but among the other stags mostly things like that five and three that's got our total up into that area, and we've tried everything I can think of. We went on Monday stream and literally checked, like, every body of water, like, down in here where I don't think red deer ever are. The river, 
even up in here in the far northwest and there's just nothing. So the only thing I can assume is it's just really bad luck, but eventually, if we keep on shooting stags, I would like to think that luck is bound to turn around and quite honestly the other thing that we've reached uh, maybe more of a positive note along with the 1,000 kills since our last diamond is 4,000 total stags on this grind, which does mean we're well beyond uh, twice as many as we had on the whitetail grind, and as of yet, no great one in sight. And I think just for the heck of it, we may go and check one other spot that I was not planning on going today. The, uh, the area actually where we've had our only two significant kills in this stretch of 1000 without a diamond. There's been two pie balls at this lake, they have been in the morning zones, but we might as well go give it a look and see if we can get anything at all to uh, kind of hang our head on today. I kind of had a feeling that maybe coming back to where we started might yield something because that last lake did not. Nothing up there in Klinarota, and I do have to say all of the mouflon that were in the area were fleeing from what I can only imagine was a pack of wolves moving through, so maybe there could have been a stag around and if there was the wolves could have spooked it before I saw it, but other than the potential of that happening, I just don't think there are any red deer over there, and of course, not the best shooting on that level 5. In fact, he's a little further than I thought. He will go down, so I guess we'll go and recover him here in a moment, but I know we already did a decent amount of red deer content this week, but with the upcoming population reset to Quattro and other maps, I wanted to kind of double my efforts and at least get out here and give it a shot once again, and also, like I said, do more than just simply saying that I've been hunting the late zones. I wanted you guys to see as well that is something I'm doing, and unfortunately it is not really yielding any different results. And if we can end on one last positive, we didn't have to track level 5 as far because he was actually walking back to his zone, and it mostly would have been that vertebrae shot, so we, we didn't shoot too low. I thought maybe the fact that he was close to 300 that would have been the case, but that yeah, kind of too low and too far forward and that shot just simply too high, but yeah, I, I don't really know where to go from here other than to just continue putting my head down, continue on this grind and hope that eventually the stars align and, you know, I don't care if we get a diamond or get the great one next, I would love to get either one just to kind of, you know, feel like we're moving forward and making progress, but that is pretty much going to do it for this video, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.